Welcome back to the channel everyone. On today's video, I want to be talking about a Canadian retail dividend payer that's just a giant in this country. It is Canadian Tire. We're going to go over some anecdotal experiences with this corporation, but I also want to talk about their financial numbers that they've been putting out and where they're going going forward because honestly, it looks really, really exciting for me. Um, I know as of late, the retail giants in America have just been getting hammered Target, Amazon, Walmart, even Costco, their stocks have been dropping really, really significantly and for good reason because of consumer confidence and uh, increased cost of doing business. Canadian Tire recently put out earnings and they were much better and I really like the runway they have going forward. We're going to get into that in a second. Canadian Tire trades under symbol CTC.A on the Toronto Stock Exchange. It's currently trading for $162. The price to earnings ratio is very low at 8.55, a market cap of just over $10 billion. And if we look at a one-year chart, we've had a pretty significant pullback from the highs of uh, just over $200. And now we're in the 162 range. And if I'm being quite honest, I do think this thing has room to drop even more just because of the retail pressures that are mounting. Um, like I said, the numbers we're seeing out of the big retail giants in America, this will translate into more of a drop, in my opinion, for Canadian Tire, even though things uh, looked pretty decent on their earnings report. Their dividend yield is currently 4.01% and to me this is something to get excited about because in Canada we all know we have big dividends coming from the financial sector and the oil sector. In between those, I mean there's a big gap like there's almost nothing that's going to be paying um, 4% minus like the odd utility company. So to see 4% in a retail uh, sphere is really really good. Uh, we'll take a look at the, if this is sustainable going forward in a second. I just pulled up the payout ratio on Yahoo Finance. This isn't currently uh, right up to date, but it has the payout ratio at 25% before the recent increase. So either way, 25%, this is really low and really sustainable going forward. On the screen here, now I have the income statement for Canadian Tire. Now, if we look back to 2018 up until the present day, we'll see that there's been a dramatic increase. Now, the trail in 12 months is the highest their income has ever been. Um, and if we look at 2020 to 2021, we're going to see a dramatic uh, increase in revenue here. Now, the reason for this is because there was a shutdown, right? Um, a lot of stores were forced to shut down while as large retailers such as Canadian Tire were allowed to remain open. Thus, they have a bigger market share. They have a bigger share of the dollars. So this should be represented here. And it is. OK, so this is kind of expected. We want to keep this going forward. That's the key. That's the secret to the, the sauce here, as it were. Now, another reason for this big increase is their online systems. They spent a lot of money upgrading their online ordering system because I'd used it many years ago and I'm like, okay, this is a disaster. I don't think I'll use it again. And I, and I left it for a few years until the pandemic where I ordered a, uh, an automatic sander. I was doing some work around the house. Anyways, it was really smooth. The, the interface was lovely. I got an email telling me everything was there. It's up to date. It's what you would expect from a modern day real, uh, retail establishment these days. So this major improvement signifies to me that their capital expenditures are being wisely spent. That investment of money really paid off and I like using their Canadian Tire online and I, will, I would use it going forward as long as they continue to have the best prices. Now we saw the, uh, the revenues at all time highs so we need to look at the earnings per share and we can see that going up significantly as well. But another way to make earnings per share go up is to buy back a bunch of shares, right? So let's take a look here. And the average share count is being deleted at a pretty substantial amount uh, going forward. So that would raise the earnings per share. But this is a good thing uh, to begin with because you you get to own more and more of this company as they buy back more outstanding shares. Your percentage of the uh, ownership in the company goes up automatically. This is exactly what I want to see from a big retail giant that's been in business for a long period of time. This is why I'm really excited to be looking into purchasing this company. Um, you know, it's getting, I get a bigger share of the pie going forward and they're making more and more money and they're increasing the dividend. So everything's kind of trending in the right direction. The last thing that I really want to look at is their free cash flow. So on the screen here, we can see their free cash flows increasing up until the pen, up until the pandemic time, there's a huge jump and then there's a big drop off, but uh, we can see a lot of that is attributed to the capital expenditures. So this is kind of what I was talking about with their investing in their online platform, as well as, you know, worker training, buying other companies, etc. So I am, 
overall, it's very, very good. And I'm really liking uh, Canadian Tire Corporation going forward. For those of you who, who are not aware, Canadian Tire is not a standalone brand. They have a bunch of other companies. Most notably, in my opinion, is Sports Check. Uh, a lot of people don't know they, they own Sports Check. Um, I really actually do like this store and I spend money there. It's, uh, it's a well-established sporting goods store. Part Source is very popular. Mark's Warehouse, huge with all the union people. They all get discounts on Mark's. Everyone goes and gets their work safety boots there. Canadian Tire had purchased. Uh, Norwegian clothing brand uh, Heli Hansen. I, I've seen their clothes around. It's not my type of thing, but uh, you know they're popular enough, and I think most people know that they have the gas bar. Now, in my opinion, Canadian Tire is an innovative store. You know, they were the first ones that I can remember to give out their own little. Uh, Canadian Tire money. Like when I was a kid, you get excited when you get Canadian Tire money. Your parents would give it to you. You could save it up and go buy something there. I mean, that's really, really cool. That's great marketing, and that's a great way to to create customer loyalty. Canadian Tire is obviously a Canadian brand, and to be honest with you, that is a big limitation of this company because they're not going to really be expanding outside of Canada. And if they did, it would be a, to a minimal amount, right? So on the map here, you can see the Canadian Tire locations. This is their Canadian footprint. You can see all their uh, stores and how they're situated across the country. And you can see there's like pretty big uh, clusters of them, which is fine. This map to me shows that there's a lot of room to expand within this country, but one day the expansion will stop. We need to keep that in mind, but I mean, that's not for, for many, many years. You don't need to worry about it right now. Up on the screen here, I have some dividend history information for Canadian Tire, and I just want to look back until, you know, let's say 2017. That's pretty recent, okay? They were paying 90 cents per share that you own of Canadian Tire in dividend income, and we fast forward to today, to May 2022, and we are getting $1.62. I mean, we're getting close to that doubling range here, okay? And that's only from 2017, guys. So they are really increasing the dividend. It is significant if you are an income investor. This is what I love to see. And I'm a little bit embarrassed that this company wasn't on my radar in the past. To be honest with you, I didn't love going into Canadian Tire as an adult. I felt like it was a like a supersized dollar store. They have so much stuff crammed into their stores. The aisles aren't wide enough. Um, it's just a little bit overwhelming to me and I prefer a different type of retail environment, but you know what? I'm going to put that aside. The numbers don't lie. They're buying back shares. They're really providing value for shareholders. And this is what I want in a company that I own. I will be purchasing this going forward. Like I said, um, I'm going to wait a little bit to see what happens with, uh, with the other retail companies going forward. I think they might continue to drop a little bit and I would love to take advantage of this company. But I mean, I, I would feel fine to buy it today. I just, I will wait. I mean, guys, look at this. In 2000, they're paying 10 cents per share. 10 cents. That was 22 years ago up until $1.62 today. Oh my gosh, man. This thing is a beast. Um, I'm buying it. Let me know if you guys already own it or it's on your radar. Should I wait? Should I buy now? If you have an opinion, let me know, guys. Give me a like and thumbs up and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.